Hey, welcome back. We're in chapter 13 of the book of Exodus, and today we're looking at verses 3 through 7 together. Let me read them. Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you went out from Egypt from the house of slavery, for by a powerful hand the Lord brought you out from this place, and nothing leavened shall be eaten. On this day in the month of Abib you are about to go forth. It shall be when the Lord brings you to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, that you shall observe this rite in this month. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout the seven days, and nothing leavened shall be seen among you, nor shall any leaven be seen among you in all your borders. Now, although there's an important first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, most of what's happening in chapter 13 here deals with the seventh day, the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We've already talked about some of these bits coming up here, so we won't repeat it all. Just remember here for a week, only as far as the bread goes, only unleavened bread is to be eaten. And think about it, what if you did some if you did something annually, if you did it seven days a week for that week, and that would be a way to remember something. Hey, if you, you know, if you had pizza like for seven days in a row or ice cream for seven days in a row, yeah, that might become a you might find some health issues going on, but anyway, you would always remember, oh, that's the time of year when we do pizza for seven days in a row. Here it's unleavened bread to remind them that they had to flee Egypt very speedily as God delivered them. He wants to fix in their minds the idea of leaving Egypt in haste as God delivered. And today God wants us, you and I, he wants us to think of ourselves as his free people, people he worked for, people that he delivered so I wonder if you noticed that five people groups are mentioned here in the land where they're going. And there's more than five groups in the land, but these five stand for all the, all the groups. So we have the Canaanite, the Hittite, Amorite, Hivite, and the Jebusite. Uh, but the father swore that he would give them that land. Back in Genesis, he swore to Abraham that he would give them that land. So since we are Abraham's children by faith, that land has been given to us. And so we are to identify with Abraham. We are to identify with the Hebrew uh, nation as God's believers. We're part of God's believers. So this is backstory, as we've said it perhaps several times. This story is our, our backstory, your story and mine today. As Christian believers, this becomes our backstory. This is, this is part of our worldview. This is how we look out into the world as we remember when we, that is, our spiritual ancestors, were delivered from bondage and God passed over our firstborn and he slew the Egyptian firstborn. Now there's something else here and I want you to pay close attention. Did you see the five groups named? We already mentioned them. But each of those five groups is a distinct group. We could take time, if we took time, and talk about what the Amorites were like, how the Hittites were different, how the Jebusites were different, and so on. Each of these is a distinct people group. They're a distinct body of people. And God's people are also a distinct body of people. Each of these groups has their own identity, and God wants his own people to have their own identity. Look, if God's people didn't have their own identity, well, where would we be? Well, we would be, I guess, absorbing the identity from the Hittites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. We'd be adopting their identity because we don't have our own identity. And what is happening today is we have this global uh, identities. The Internet is, is, has made it so that anybody anywhere and everybody everywhere can stream whatever they want and view whatever they want, mostly. And so uh, people in Japan are watching people in America, people in America are watching people in Korea, and, and we're all, people are all shaping in a certain direction. So this leads to an enormous potential for manipulation and loss of identity. And so us Christians, here we are in the mix, you know, what are we doing? Well, hopefully some of us are broadcasting, I guess, Christian identity out into the world so that it's among the different options people have. 
But uh, what's sad, though, is that many Christians, instead of uh, deriving our identity from being part of God's people and, and receiving from God's word the insights that God intends us to receive, instead we're receiving every other witch uh, idea and thing that comes in, and it looks interesting, and it, it's flashing lights, so we're kind of attracted to it. So we got to watch out here because God wants his own people to have a distinct identity as believers in Yahweh. So anyway, to wrap this up on this section, God promised his land, Genesis, uh, what, 12, 7 to Abraham. And this is, you know, again, he, he wants his people to have a distinctive identity. You and I as Christians, we shouldn't have a vague identity. We shouldn't be just waiting like little baby birds for the to be fed by the secular world and drop its different ideas in. And so, oh, this is a narrative the world wants us to take in, and, and we, we swap it up and, and eat it and swallow it down. No, we should eat from God's word. Uh, what is our food? Our food is, it is written. <laughs> and so that's how we'll be a distinct people. God's people are distinct from the world. They're not out of the world. They're, they're projecting God's truth out into the world, but they are distinct from and separate from. And this enables us to move in the direction of being a holy people. And so these are good things, not bad things. I know these things are kind of exactly like contrary to what we're used to. But, uh, but the Bible gives us a better plan. May God help you and I live by that better plan. See you tomorrow morning.